with an aim to provide support for a robust and well-connected ecosystem, Karnataka Chief Minister Basmaraj Bamai released the Karnataka Research Development and Innovation Policy on Wednesday, which has the focal objective of financing the infrastructure and institutions. The policy, which was released during the inaugural session of the Bengaluru Tech Summit, intends easy access to a skilled talent base, grassroots innovators, support for university-based cutting-edge research and researching enterprises for cooperation between industry and science, and for innovative business startups. The policy focuses on strengthening governance and financing of the research and innovation system. Strengthening Research and Innovation Policy with the rendering of Nada Geete, the state anthem, I would request all of you to kindly rise. Dr. Ramya Siyar, Dr. Padmini Oak, and Shemati Nikita will present the Nada Geete. They will tell you that they will be a winner for Nada Geete. Check. Check, check. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you take a quick look at the logo of Bengaluru Tech Summit, what it promises tells us about a proud legacy and, of course, will guide us to a promising future. So all of you, sit back for a few minutes and uh, let's watch the video which tells us this wonderful story. Kindly dim the lights and let's have the video, please. India is vast and mystical. The strength that India possesses today is inherited through its rich culture of traditions, art and knowledge passed on silently from one century to the next, from one dynasty to another. The Kadambas, Gangas, Chalukyas, Vaisalas, the Rayas of Vijayanagara and the Vadayas of Mysore symbolize the glory of Karnataka, all protected by the divine power of Gandaberunda, the two-headed bird. Gandaberunda is not just the mystical bird, it's the ethos of Karnataka.
It's the symbol and an insignia that protects, guides and steers the state of Karnataka and its people even today and into tomorrow. The 25th edition of Bengaluru Tech Summit, the saga continues and we unfold yet another fascinating tale of the future, crafted by the visionaries and the young minds. Presenting tech for the next gen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a proud moment. Bengaluru Tech Summit, the formal inauguration by the Honorable Chief Minister of Karnataka, Sri Baswaraj Bombay. It's a moment of pride for the state of Karnataka as we achieve the milestone, ladies and gentlemen, indeed a milestone of organizing Ipataidu Varsha, 25 years of Bengaluru Tech Summit. The immense response Karnataka has received across the years from various stakeholders is indeed a great testimony to the state's industry-friendly policies and nurturing the ecosystem which makes Karnataka the most preferred destination. If you agree with me, please put your hands together in unison. Indeed, it is Karnataka, Namma Karnataka. The theme of this year's summit, as we all know, is Tech for Next Gen, which says the state of Karnataka is today on a mission to promote faster and more inclusive growth by identifying tech talent hubs beyond Bengaluru, like Upalli, Dharavada, Mangaluru, Mysuru, Kalaburgi, Shivamogga, and so on. The talent pool emerging out of these regions with the skills matching the global trends is making these locations suitable for growth. So it's beyond Bengaluru, and Karnataka will see an overall development and growth in the various sectors. We would like to thank the Honorable Chief Minister and the dignitaries for lighting the lamp and signaling the beginning of a new era in the history of Karnataka. Uh, the media friends wants a group photograph, so I would request the Honorable CM and the dignitaries to kindly. The honor. Media friends, not to get uh, worked up, you will get the proper photograph. So kindly do it coolly. And now, it's my pleasure to request the Honorable Chief Minister could kindly release the Research and Development Policy, the Karnataka Research, Development and Innovation Policy. I would request the Task Force members of uh, Research, Development and Innovation Policy Task Forces to kindly come over and be present. Professor Ashok S. Shetter, Professor Rajesh Sundareshan, Professor Srivardhini Jha, Professor Shiv Prasad, Dr. Nandini Prasad, Mr. Madhusudan Atre, Mr. Balaji Srinivas Holur, Mr. Anand Kopar, Professor Meenakshi Rajiv, Professor Vidya Shankar, and Dr. Jai Asundi. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause for this all important moment as uh, the aim of the policy is indeed manifold. Strengthening governance and financing of research and innovation system, strengthening research and innovation capacity, research and innovation to drive the regional ecosystem, research and development and innovation to support entrepreneurship and micro, small and medium enterprises, and to promote research and development and innovation in priority sectors for social transformation. Bandukale, samshodhane matu navinyate vivasthaya adalita hagu hanakasu vetchavannu balapadasodhu. Samshodhane matu navinyate samarthyavanna balapadasodhu. Please give a round of applause. Nima Jorada Kartadana. This will be the leading document for other states to follow. Samajika Parivartane Galigagi, Adyata Valle Galli, some show the name of the Obi Brutti Haku Navinetege, Utuji Sutsa, Idrali Serita. We would like to thank the Honorable Chief Minister for releasing this document. Thank you, Guru Sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I would now request the Honorable Chief Minister of Karnataka, 
ശ്രീ ബസ്വരാജ് എസ് ബൊമ്മായി ടു കൈൻഡ്ലി അഡ്രസ് ഓൾ ഓഫ് അസ് ബന്ധുക്കളെ It has been a great pleasure being here and uh, listening to all the leaders of the world and leaders in uh, technology for almost two hours. Each one has brought in a new idea, a new scale and a new vision. And I feel that uh, This itself is a very good foundation for the success of this summit. A good beginning is half done. That's what people say. And uh, I believe that we have done really a good beginning. Thanks to all the dignitaries on the dais and uh, all the delegates. Bangalore Tech Summit has got its own place in technological world. and it has got a very good legacy it has stood the test of the time and now it is on the anvil to fly high in the future so on this occasion i really welcome and recognize the present of uh, sri pitri honkan who has just now left his highness mr omar bin sultan al ulama minister of state of artificial intelligence uae his highness uh, mr tim wax from australia and our own ministers sri ashwath narayan murgesh nirani and uh, we have uh, chairman and ceo of kendrel uh, martin and uh, we have navin tiwari arvind kumar and our uh, chief secretary shrimati vandita sharma our itbt secretary ramana reddy and uh, chairman vision group and uh, a leader in biotechnology not only in karnataka in into the she is a leader in the world in biotechnology dr kiran majumdar shah and chairperson vision group information and technology shri krishna gopal krishnan who has been a uh, very very effective leader silently working for last three decades for the growth of it sector in karnataka and in bangalore and shri prashant prakash chairman vision group of startups who has uh, got tremendous ideas about not only the startups but about the entire ecosystem to how to take it forward and i recognize the presence of sri ashok shetter who was a chairman of uh, our own r&d policy which you have now just now released ladies and gentlemen and my press friends i think uh, science says that uh, a human being can't sit more than 2 hours in one place that to listening continuously so keeping in mind i'll try to be as short as possible this has been a unique summit for last 25 years the journey of this summit year by year has enhanced our thought process our commitment our goals and our vision therefore i congratulate and thank all the leaders for the last 25 years who have made this bangalore tech summit a unique tech summit and in the real sense of a future tech summit i thank each one of you who have contributed for last 25 years who is the greatest innovator we are talking of innovation r and d everything 
But who is the greatest innovator? There are a lot of leaders in different fields and in different times. But there is one unique leader who is always a leader and will be leader time memorial. And as long as time, time is there on this uh, cosmic world. And that innovator, the greatest innovator is our own creator, Almighty. He has created us. And he has created human being with the power of thinking, power to give ideas. Probably that during the creation chain, there has been a lot of metamorphosis and organic growth, but at the end of the day, the creator might be tired creating different species with more intelligent, more intelligent. And one day he said, I will create such a species where they will take the future of this world. They, they will think for me. They will work for me. And he has created human beings. Imagine if creator not created human beings, the world would have been totally different. So the greatest creation of a creator is human beings. Having said this, having thought about this, it becomes an immense responsibility of all of us, especially who have been bestowed with all kinds of facilities and all kinds of successes. It has become our own responsibility to take the human race forward, not only the human race, entire globe and entire ecosystem of the globe forward so that it will not only become a better place to live, it should be a place to live eternally. Otherwise, why I said eternally? We have been facing a lot of challenges. The globe is shrinking. Global life is been reducing year by year by year. Whatever has been created the natural resources are dwindling second by second. I'm very choosy about my words. The natural resources are dwindling second by second. It's alarming. Unless until the ambitious growth of a human being to live a better life is joined with a better environment, we don't have a good future. Our forefathers have given such a beautiful world to us. We have to give a better world to our children. But unfortunately, what's happening around is all the development has come with a cost and some are with a dear cost. Hence, it is said that it is a stealing from the future. Whatever the technology, whatever the innovations, their goal should be to conserve. Conserve for the future. Whatever technology, whatever innovation, their goal is to be to connect. Connect so that the global thinking starts to save this planet. Whatever the technology, whatever the innovations should bring down the digital divide which is happening all over the world. If this can be achieved, the other thing, better living, better technology, better enabling of technology will certainly bring laurels to the technological world. So I want to give a call in this important summit that we will have eco-friendly technology, eco-friendly innovations, and eco-economics. This is a call I want to give here. It might feel a little odd, but that's the reality. If you don't face the reality, then we'll be forced to regret. 
Better not regret. Let us act. Therefore, with these few words, I am sure, my hope is on our technology, especially IT, BT, artificial in intelligence, renewable energy. I have got a hope on this. These can really build the future. These can conserve and save our natural resources. The ITBT has brought in such a change. The digitalization has brought such a change. There is a great information. There is a great data in front of us to see what's happening and to take a, a judgment which is good for the human mankind. But for ITBT, it would have not been possible. And especially BT and its innovations with new kind of drugs, new kind of innovations in BT has made life very, very easy as well as the longevity of human being has been increased by BT. Artificial intelligence has helped us in so many ways, right from manufacturing to other sectors. Similarly, Renewable energy is playing such an important role. The carbon footprints, are, which are a challenge through renewable energy, I think we can meet the challenge very squarely. I'm confident of it. And there are so many other technologies. If you put to use, the whole ecosystem will be very, very conducive to live on. So the concentration of uh, all of us to see that the legacy of our forefathers and the intent of our creator should be taken forward to the future generation. Secondly, people have said so many good words about Bangalore. Yes, of course, Bangalore is a very unique and special. It is there to see, not much to speak. But however, there is a small history for it. Our own Kannadigas are always renovating. They try to improve, right from my farmer at the field has improved a lot of techniques in farming. With this background, our uh, Vadiyars, Mysore Maharaja, in whose place we are having this conference, has given greatest Philip for science and technology development, right from education in science and technology, education for women, from there on to the industries. A huge industrial ventures were done during his time. Then came post-independence public sector units, which has brought in a lot of technologies, a lot of collaborations, and a lot of r and too. So these are the foundations. Then. The next era came about ITBT. The leaders of ITBT, some of them are sitting here, some are not here, but they have contributed immensely. They have taken advantage of this technical base and converted the whole thing into a software where the entire world has now accepted it. And the work they have put in and the leadership they have shown and they have passed on to the next generation is something, a story, should be written and remembered for ages to come. They have made a paradigm shift, not only in um, ITBT, not only in economies, but in the levers of power also. Prime Minister used to visit Delhi, now they are visiting Bangalore. You are all visiting Bangalore and not Vidhan Sada, but you are visiting campuses of Infosys, Wipro, and Biotechnology, Kiram Majumdas campuses. That is a paradigm shift of power. Because 21st century is the era of knowledge. There was a time when a man who had large extent of land ruled the world, Alexander. Then came a time where a person who had got a lot of business skills and capital ruled the world. But 21st century is a century of knowledge. And there your place comes and Bangalore gets its importance. So with this history, Another point I want to make about Bangalore, which is unique. There is a saying, 
that Thiruvallur uh, saying is there. In between concept and creation lies a shadow. In between concept and creation lies a shadow. And as far as Bangalore and uh, Bangalore tech people are concerned, in between concept and creation, the shadow is very, very little. They have brought in the concept to the creation to such a level that the world is really surprised to see that what has been taught has been created here in Bangalore. That is the unique of Bangalore. And that is the strength of Bangalore. I think people should recognize this. Hard work by our young engineers, our young scientists. You know, how many people, how many scientists, how many engineers land in Bangalore International Airport today? More than 5,000 engineer scientists come in and walk out of Bangalore every day because we have got 400 niche R&D units here, institutions here. Hence, this is a place where anything can happen and everything can happen. Just have a will to happen. Make a will, your wish will be converted into a reality. As far as this tech summit is concerned, my government is 100% behind this. We have been an innovating society. And being an innovating society, it has been our, uh, our duty to see that the innovation of the highest orders takes place here. Hence, Bangalore has become a unique place. And beyond Bangalore is also now a uh, reality, which, is, which was a dream about two decades back. And uh, we will do everything and, ev and anything possible to see that the technology goes beyond Bangalore because we believe in the talent of the entire Karnataka. We have got best of talent in Mysore, Hubli, Darwad, Mangalore, Gulburga. We have got best of engineering colleges, we have got best of diploma colleges, we have got best of medical colleges, research centers. So, Karnataka, entire Karnataka is a place of opportunities for technology. Hence, I invite you all to come participate not only in the summit, but into the actions. One of the concerns I want to just express here is urbanization of our society. Urbanization of society has been taking place such a speed unless until we use technology in our modern smart cities, things will be difficult. At this rate, in the next 10 years, the urbanization will be doubled what we have in the entire globe. And uh, in India, 40% of our population will be in urban. And urban, unless it is planned, we all know through our experiences that it will not be a better place to live compared to the villages. I don't want to name what, what people say, but urbans, urban areas will not be the worthy place to live in unless until we do a technological in, uh, intervention. Therefore, I give a challenge to all our Bangalore techies to come out with a modern technological planning where high-tech cities in the real sense, not by name, in the real sense where ease of living is done to the urban world. And this can happen only through Bangalore to the entire country and the globe. And the second thing which I want to just flag off is that the human race, because of its environmental changes, has facing a lot of health, health challenges. And this tech summit should concentrate on health sector, innovations in health sector, and see that the, da the danger which is coming through, where COVID was just a small example, the future should be healthy, safe, safe health, and tech should start working right now so that the, the benefits will be there for next one decade or two decades. So this is the right time to think about health of a poorest of poor man, malnutrition child, and malnutrition mother. Unless until we think of malnutrition child and mother, 
we do can't have a healthy society so we have to concentrate on these things and of course our prime minister is really working on this he has done one simple thing he has said that i'll give drink pipe drinking water to all the houses in the country more than 25 crores and in one year he has connected 7 crores household a pure drinking water which no prime minister did so and uh, his drive for education with new education policy is drive for skill development in a huge manner this is how he wants to bring and build new india and this is how we want to build new karnataka with this few words i want to announce one or two things one is we are building six cities new cities in karnataka as i dreamt for a very well planned new high tech cities six new cities will be there all around the karnataka in gulbarga hubli darwad mangalore mysore area and central karnataka also however one city will be in bangalore near bangalore so that will be a knowledge city and a science and tech city knowledge and science and tech city we going to have one on theme for one on city and uh, we are going to have knowledge and tech city in bangalore very close to the airport and uh, best of the universities best of the industries best of r and d centers will be placed there <clears throat> this is going to come very soon within 6 months we are going to announce that city and we will lay down our plans for that city the second is looking into the the growth of the startups the energy in the startups i am really overwhelmed and that is the future for all our young minds to ignite them we have done lot of programs elevate programs and other programs but i feel that the energy is much more than what government is doing so we have to do much more our prashant is here he has got man of with lot ideas so i have come to the conclusion that we will have a startup park where it can be multimodal um, park in different sectors right from agri tech to genomics wherever whatever you want the startup park will be there and this is also going to come in next 6 months and this will be also very much closer to the airport hence with this i think the tech summit will get a great philip other day our honorable prime minister has inaugurated uh, the second terminal of our international airport next time when you come we'll have that experience is one of the finest terminals i have at least i have ever seen in the world the ceos of different uh, airports has congratulated us their telephone said one of the best uh, airports have come up in bangalore even our airport is looking little shortfall therefore we want to upgrade it to that bangalore level that is the design that is the concept and that is the strength of bangalore bangalore makes everything happen even a uh, just a ordinary thinking man will try to think beyond that he'll he'll think his iq will go up and a man with iq will be a scientist here that is the ecosystem what bangalore can give so i really congratulate all the delegates who have come you have come at the right place at the right time be part of the system you also not only be innovative be prosperous make profits as well as see that our state is also profited in the whole thing so ultimately i congratulate for the very good beginning of this summit let the deliberations come out with path breaking and as i have noticed that it should be on human development of the future of this world so all the innovations in one word to say in one sentence to say let all the innovations create a new man a new healthy man and a 
a new, better life for the, all the human beings. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Chief Minister has called upon the entire fraternity to develop societal friendly initiatives and the government of Karnataka is totally with all of you. So let's give a huge round of applause and thank the Honorable Chief Minister for his address. Thank you, sir.